So you just heard my spiel. There are certain statistics which are built, whose computation is built into any logic. These cross-sectional statistics count or sum up things or take the average of things and the min or the max of quantities across the population for different subsets of the population, for example. Um, I'll, I'll illustrate that uh, here with this model, um, which incidentally is now posted. So I'm gonna save this as version 10. I did post version nine for anyone wishing to avail themselves of it. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. And uh, awesome stuff, thanks, thanks Wade. Okay, um, so here, uh, I will remind you where statistics live. What, where do statistics live in this model? Can anyone say? Where in the model does do statistics live? In the what? They may on the population. On the population, yeah. It's in the population of Maine. So if we go to Maine, and we go down Maine, and we go to the population, and we'll see the population is adorned with statistics. Okay. Um, and we see a bunch. Of, those are cross-section. Again. And it, just to illustrate my point about the repertoire here, we did a count that meets certain conditions. Um, we could do a sum over some quantities. Um, for example, we could sum the number of times across the entire population people have been quit. Or we could do so for a subset of the population. If you left condition blank, it would sum it up over all the population. Uh, by contrast, if you had a condition um, here, it would sum it up only over, sum up whatever is here, only over those who have met this condition. This stipulate this condition must be met by those being summed up. Similarly for average, we could specify an average over the population. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be a, a statistic um, that we could compute. To illustrate this, I'm going to say, for example, average, Um, cumulative, you know where I'm going with this, years smoked, okay? Let's suppose that we wanted it only over the population, only over the population who are not, who are current smokers or former smokers. How do we do that? What would the condition be? Anyone? What would the condition be? Well, they not agent. Yes, you could do. You could say not agent, never smoker. You could do that. Or you could say either current smoker or former smoker. Right. And there's arguments both ways. For example, if the structure of the state chart changed to break out different categories of former smoker, maybe that would be fragile if we name former smokers specifically. Um, on the other hand, saying not, never smoker, um, uh, yeah, I mean, we could say not, never smoker. Let's, why don't we say not, never smoker? So here we go. The way in which we say not, do anyone know how to say this? Exclamation point. So we would do agent dot in state. So that's a logical not. It's gonna take some condition and take the not of it. So if it's true, the condition, then it's gonna be not of it is gonna be false. If this condition is false, it's gonna be, be true. Okay, so. Oh, uh, Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, so person dot never smoker, right? So here we're gonna total it up. We're gonna 
consider Kim if you're spoke to only across those who have ever smoked. We're going to take the average of that. So what do we take the average of? How, how do we give? We want to do this for a person. The total duration spent smoking. What are we going to put for that statistic? What are we going to put here? We're going to take the average of agent dot total okay, years spent smoking. What is what is it called? Total duration spent smoking. I should really arguably I should have named it total years spent smoking. There we go. Total duration spent smoking. Okay, so this would be uh, amongst amongst smokers, amongst ever smokers. It's actually a concept of ever smoker because it's a natural concept, that, you know, and it contra contraposes with never smoker. Okay, so. These statistics are somewhat versatile within a certain range, but they always are cross-section. And sometimes they need us to like define a function. Why is this here? Why is this begin paren, end paren there? Can anyone say? Why is that there? Because this is a function. calling a function. It's saying, hey, function. Give me back the value for this person. Give me back their duration, total duration spent smoking, right? And that function returned a value. Previous plus the current. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now, are we okay with this? Okay. So I've just said that, and, and just to, to illustrate this, we built, we run, go and if you go look at the population you'll see that statistic average cumulative year has been 2.7374 it's rising it's a close excuse me it's a cohort being followed including some who die it is an open population but no one's coming in and it's rising over time okay just, that's just to illustrate those sort of statistics. And we can do sort of a, a max and min over also subsets of the population. Okay. Now, our, our job now is to put in place flow statistics. Now, any logic doesn't, despite... Long time advocacy on my part. They still don't do this. I don't know. It's not terribly hard, but they haven't done it. And it's unfortunate because we have a lot of statistics in the world, not just in epidemiology, that reflect change over some period of time. And it's a little bit of a pain to do this, but it's not too bad. Maybe that's why they haven't done it. They think, oh, it's it's easy to do. Okay. Um okay. So what we're gonna do is is put in place a simple idea. It's, it has a certain simplicity to it that goes back to the Stone Age. Okay. And that's to do with the notion of a tally, a running tally. Well, you tally things up when things happen. You know that idea, right? When things happen, you... Right? And so on. You've got a running tally. We're going to have a running tally of our quantities that's going to go on for however long we want to compute it. So if you want to compute incidents of 
heart disease over a year, we'll tally it up each time it happens in the year. Hmm? Yes, I should get this on the board here. Each time it happens during the year, we'll tally it up, and then we will Uh, and then at the end of the year, we'll report this value, the tally, and then we'll clear the slate and we'll start again. Simple idea. We okay with that? Let's enact it. Shall we not? Hearing no objections, we will do so with alacrity. Okay, here we go. So let's bend ourselves once more to the task, ladies and gentlemen, once more into the breach. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to compute yearly incidence of heart disease. Are we okay with that? Hmm. Once you see the pattern, you'll see it, the opportunities for it writ large over tons of different models. Hmm? Many, 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 many different models. Are we okay? Okay, so let's put it into place. Okay, so we have a running tally of occurrences. And, and, and I want you to think, this is an important thing. When, you, when, you, when you're going to add some logic to the model, one of the first things you need to do is ask, where does it need to live in the model? Hmm? That tally that we're running, one, two, three, four, cross out one two three four those are occurrences of heart disease incidents of heart disease occurrences right someone in the population so where is that tally going to live it's one tally across the entire population so where does it live speak on as in one voice dear students It lives in population because it's one tally across the the entire population. So it lives in population. It might be might be folded into they can't lives at a person level, but we're not running a tally at a person level for how many times they've gotten heart disease. No, it's at a population level. Okay. So we're gonna do it in Maine. We're gonna go to the palette and we're going to add what? We're gonna add something that varies over time. And what do we add? Speak on a variable. Hey, not that. A variable. And this is going to be, I'll call it tally of about heart disease tally in year. Heart disease tally for a year. Tally for year. Annual heart disease tally. Right. For current year? Well, it's 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 actually for a current year. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's specific to this year. I'm, annual is not quite right because it's running tally during the year. So you're running it up. Not just annually, but you're, you're running up during the... So it's not like it occurs annually, but it is true that it's cleared annually. So it's kind of for the current year. Now, what is this thing? It's a count. So what is it? It's a... What type is it? Is it a color? Is it a service dog? Is it a... It's an ant. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay, and its initial value of the tally starts when we clear it as what? Zero. When I taught these courses, so I, I've taught, what, eight, eight boot camps, nine boot camps in Australia, um, maybe nine. And they said, in Australia, you don't call it zero. So what do you call it? They say, you call it bugger all. I say, what? What? <laughs> You can't be serious. So that's what we call it. I'd say, go. I don't know. Are you, are you trying to trick me into saying something improper? They said, no. And so, 
and calm. I said, look, if, if, if you said to your grandmother, like, she said, how many apples do you have left? Would you use that term? Okay, maybe not for a grandmother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I still haven't figured that one out. Like, okay. Um, but they really, really wanted me to use it as my standard term, but I, I declined. Okay. Heart disease tally for current year. Um, uh, and it's zero initially. Uh, and we're going to run it up when what happens? You tell me. This is the other key part. For when do we run it up? When do we add something to the tally? When what happens? When yeah, when that transition takes place. And where does that transition live? Back in person. Okay. And 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 we do it here, right? So when it's here in the action, we're going to increment that. Now, in order to refer to that tally, we're going to need to remember where that tally lives. So we're in person now. We want to increment that tally. We want to add that tick to the tally. But where does that tally live? Main dot. Main dot. And it's like heart disease something, right? Heart disease tally for current year. And what are we gonna what are we gonna do with that? Plus plus it. And do we need a semicolon? Yes, because we're doing something. We're saying make it happen. Do it, right? Just like that. Right? Okay, just like it during the boot camp. Okay, there we go. We're almost done. We're almost done. Okay, so, so we did this, but what's the missing thing? How do you decide whether to put something on the transition versus on the on enter? Good question. Action. Is that just semantics or is there a... Well, great, great question. There, there are a few, there are a few common considerations. Number one, if it needs to apply in common to any transition coming in, I would put it in the entry transition, or anyone going out, I would put it in the exit. Oh, sorry, not the transition, the entry action. If it needs to apply to all going out, I'd put it in the exit one. Um, by contrast. If it's kind of specific to a transition, there's only one transition. I'm a little bit torn about it because I think conceptually it's associated with, with a change, like it's a change of situation. And that's what the transition reflects, like a particular transition is like a change occurring. And, and so I put it here with the transition because kind of morally, I think of it associate, associated with this transition, like it's the act of changing state. I think it's arguable about where it should live. You could, there are times where I have multiple transitions coming in that are different things, right? Sure. Um, I, yeah. I, I guess... I want to get really detailed. I go into what you named the thing, right? So if I wanted to count, right, count heart disease incidents, that's right. I put it on heart disease. But if I wanted to count developed heart disease, I put it good, on the transition. Good point. Yeah. So you want to be name the side you, that feels weird. I, well, I think you want to be clear conceptually what it includes. And let me let me give you an example. Okay. If you don't want, if we're going to see probably tomorrow how we will go beyond just having one privileged state into which people come and instead divide people up, divvy them up among the states, okay? Um, so they start in different states. That's a common need. You want to you know, start the model. Some people start with heart disease. And if we didn't want those people 
to be counted in the tally, like the giant tally at time zero is the models being initialized. We would do it in the transition, this particular transition. We wouldn't do it as we're divvying them up. And if you had it in entry action, it would total it up for those people. So that's a consideration. And that's a pretty common need to divvy them up among the states. Does that help at all? Yeah. I mean, I, th I think you're, you know, you're- like If we made this like yeah. one step harder and then had like a heart disease diagnosis- That's right. Right. That's right. Which again, having heart disease versus getting the diagnosis. Yes. Now you got access to healthcare, et cetera. And then like interventions. That's right. Back to healthy heart. Like it That's gets right. so much more complex. That's right. And you, you have to be careful. And, and it turns out when you get, so I'll we'll probably see this and, and I certainly could show you some nice uh, or some, uh, some state charts that um, end up uh, illustrating this, but um uh, I will say that uh, when it comes to different models, um, there are times where we have quite a bit more complex structure. You know, uh, case in point, uh, something like this or this. I'm gonna I'm gonna drag this over so you can see it on the sh screen share. But something like this. You notice there are all these hierarchical state charts that group states. And one of the reasons they do so is because they capture common logic, but they also capture logical groupings that you want to ask about. Is someone a current user abstracting over whether they are on prescribed opioids or street drugs? You want to be able to ask, are they a current user of opioids? Right? Kind of makes sense. But you might also here group them because there are certain actions in common between anyone who's in one of those states that apply regardless of whether you're in this state or this state, you, you can leave, or regardless of whether you're in this one or this one, you can leave. And this is very common. Here's another model with this, where you have these groupings, and these become very, very useful um, for sort of dealing with the complications associated with so many states. And you have to be fairly careful about where, in what transitions, and in what exit actions and entry actions things are occurring, because otherwise you can miss classes of, of transitions. You're in a hurry, you go add a new transition, and you forget to put this thing that's on the two other existing transitions, this third transition, and then it's missing out on those particular transitions. Um, I, I've given some rules of thumb there. Um, but the truth is that right now, a lot of that complication is imposed on the modeler for managing their own conventions. And I'm not actually, it may be that you could articulate a set of rigorous best practices for these things that would delineate different cases where you definitely want to do it this way, this one. I've, I've gave one, right, where you divide people up initially. Yeah, initial states make a huge, huge difference. Um, but that's just emblematic, I think, of some unwritten rules that we probably could uncover about when to do it one way or the other. You know, there's probably some good thinking to take place that would help give a few more rules, bring a few more rules to the table. They won't cover all cases, but they'll be helpful for avoiding many common ones. And, and there may be a certain discipline you maintain for managing these things. Um, just some musings there. I, I don't know if it's gonna handle all cases, but it might be useful. But when you're dealing with uh, hierarchical ones, you know, you one of the virtues of that is you can group things that would otherwise be multiple transitions into one, consolidate them and put, you know, sort of actions on those transitions. What I wish any logic had was some way of sort of pressing a button, seeing where all the exit or seeing where all the actions are that are illustrated here or what have you, but um, uh, that that isn't happening right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but we're not quite done with um, with our example, right? Yeah, um, 
we did increment this tally. And it's it's a good point, you know, some question about where it is. But remember when we incremented, we're incrementing it right now for the year. What needs to happen after this year is done? Well, we need to report this tally, right? We're going to report it for the year. So, and then we need to do what? After we report it, we need to do what? We need to, what do we do with the tally after it's, we're on to a new year. Set it back to zero. So that's the pattern. And and I'll show you how to do this. So we're going to add a number, another denizen of the of the analysis palette. And in fact, an upstanding citizen of said palette. Namely a data set. Data sets are, are interesting beasts. They serve two primary goals. They actually, well, yeah. So so um you can have a data set that stores over time certain values as revealed by the timestamp associate with them. You can also use it to store pairs of values. Instead of time, you, you have pairs. And if they're used in experiments, you can actually use them to, or particularly parameter variation experiments, you can use them to store sort of for each iteration of the run, each time model is run to store some information. Uh, here, we're just going to use values over time. So this data set is going to be um, heart disease incidents um, for year, or no, it's really annual heart disease incidents. So I'll say annual, annual heart disease incidents data set. I often put the name data set just so when I see what it is, or I, I know what, you, you notice that often like I, I use time plot at the end of this and I'll do data set. Just so when I see the name, I know what it is. Okay, uh, data set, okay. And you'll notice it says use time as horizontal axis value. Okay, so it's sort of record time stamped values. And the question is, what are these values gonna be? Well, we're gonna fill them in. They're gonna actually be heart disease incident for successive years. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use something we added up, up, up above to compute histograms. Does anyone remember what that is, what it's called? An event. An event. It's called an event. Don't be fooled by the name. An event can represent a, a schedule of events or a, a sequence of events. Not just one, but it could be many. It doesn't have to be evenly spaced. They can occur at a rate or they can occur evenly spaced. They can occur one time or a whole a sequence in perpetuity. We want a sequence in perpetuity. So this will be called report and report heart disease incidents data set event. Oh, uh, no, not data set, incidents, event. There we are. It's going to occur, not, it's going to be a timeout. It occurs cyclically every year. And we're going to undertake an action here. What is this action going to be, logically? What's the action? Anyone say? What do we need to do with our tally? Every year on the year. Add a value. Yeah, to the data set. By the way, I misspelled, misspelled that. This should be heart disease with a single E um, instead of EE -E straight. Sorry, it has, a, it has a single E in a row. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to do two things. We're going to take the current tally and we're going to add it to this data set. So we're going to do annual heart disease data set dot add 
And we just add one value because it's going to automatically timestamp it because we've said that. And, and what value are we going to add? You tell me. What value are we going to add to that data set? Tally. Tally. I'm going to add the tally. Hey, heart disease and... Hey, no, no, not the data set. Heart disease tally for current year. You notice that's an integer, but it will still happily take it into it. It's can store double precision values. So we'll just store it as a double precision value. Fine. Okay, so we add in the tally for the current year. There we go. And then there's one more task we have to do. What is it? Set it to zero. Clear it. So we take this tally and we set it to zero. Do we need semicolons after both of those? Yes, because we're saying what? What are we saying? Do it. Yeah. There we go. Great. Okay. Um, build early, build often, build happily. Okay. We just built. Are we okay? Now go to projects and run. Here we go. And it's running. And you'll notice this, this data set is being added to over time, if I could use crude, describe it in crude language. This is the annual heart disease incident, the annual occurrence of heart disease on a per year basis. Pause it just so you can see it. There we go. Okay. So that's annual incidence of heart disease. Let's complete the thought by plotting it out. And I'll try, show you a slick thing about data sets. One of the nice, one of the virtues that recommend data sets is that they can be plotted really easily. They can also be exported quite easily. Oh, I should have shown you that. Watch this. I'm going to run it again. And I'm going to show you how to export that data set. Lickety split. You ready? You want to see it? Here we go. I'm going to copy. And I am going to go here. And I am going to paste it in. And there it is paste it in in all its glory. So it turns out you can export these uh, very easily. Boom. Okay. But another virtue that recommends them of some merit is that we can put them in a plot. So let's create one of our favorite citizens of the analysis palette to wit a time plot. So one more time plot for the day. This will be the last thing and we'll be wrapping up here. Okay, so we've built up our time plot. There we go. Okay, and this will be called heart disease incident time plot, okay? And the data here, guess what we're gonna use? A, an option we haven't previously used, what is it? It's a data set and it's going to be annual heart disease incidents. Ah, annual heart disease incidents. And it's going to be annual heart disease incidents data set. 
as the thing to plot. Simple, sweet. Are we okay with this? Build and make sure it's happy. And run it. Here we go. It's it's running. And it looks kind of funky because it's connecting things. And you notice there's this weird pattern or it's erasing it. I'll show you what that is. It's a common dysfunction. Um, it, and it comes about because of the options. It's common enough. I want to show you how to fix it. How do you how do you resolve that? Okay, go down to data update, okay? And you notice there's this thing here, display up to how many samples? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make it display up to a thousand samples. Um, and uh, that's right. Um, and, uh, oh, okay, yes, and and what's the time window? Um, I haven't really set how long this model runs. We can do that. Maybe we'll have it run for 100 years. So I'm going to go to main, baseline, and I'm going to, excuse me for jumping around, but I'm going to go to baseline. The stop time is 100. It's time unit is years. I'm going to do stop at specified time. So what did I do? I went to this scenario. I went to model time. And I said, stop at specified time. It's going to simulate from zero to 100 years. We'll do the same thing for population 1,000. We're going to go here. I'm going to say stop at specified time. And it's going to be 100 years. There we go. Okay, and then I guess in that sense, we don't have to worry too much about that plot only having 100 time units. So we don't have to do this display of 2,000, although that would be one way to prevent that from occurring. Both the time window and the display up to 100 samples, they'll use 100 because we're only going 100 years. So just to remind us, for each of these scenarios, I went to model time and I set it to go from zero to 100. And because model time unit is years for the model as a whole, um, each of these will go for 100 years. I'm going to run it and we will see it play out over time in terms of the model incident. So here we go. And and there we go. And here's the annual heart disease incident. Oh, why is it doing that? Oh, man. Oh, you know what? I think it may be because the data set. Okay. Matt, Matthews, here it is. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, this. That's, no, this would have. Okay, it should be a hundred samples, should, one per year. Um, did we yeah. do something silly, Matthews? You had a suggestion. Yeah, uh, increase the data set. It, it, hundred samples is doing something weird. Uh, I increased it to a thousand. It works just fine. But I will check later if it counts as two entries. That's exactly it. That's what I'm suspecting. Um, I think it's because. Um, it may be, so, so firstly, let's run it. So one hypothesis is that it's entering two of these every time. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting suspicious of that too. We will probably see a telltale pattern. No. Nope. Um, oh, look at this. Zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three. So the year is counting as one of the data points and then mm -hmm. the... No, I th I actually think it's being invoked twice. This is uh, something I've encountered before. And I think it's because, see, I, 
I, I understand if it says update data automatically. This says do not update. This goes off every year. So I wouldn't expect that to be done twice. I think it may have to do with this having update data automatically. I think it's the chart, believe it or not. I may be wrong, but let's, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, maybe let's, let's say, um, do not update data automatically here. I think the chart may be forcing the data set to update. Um, here we go. There we go. It's it's beautiful. Look at that. We cleared the problem. The chart was the chart is its own event that was triggering the the data set uh, mumble 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 mumble. Um, somehow the chart was mumble. Um, the chart was doing something funky with the data set. It was it was getting the data set to mumble. Um, somehow it was duplicating the, the, the data there. In any case, um, getting it to report twice or something. That's really strange. I, I don't understand that because each time it reports, it clears it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, um, okay. I, yeah, okay. Anyway, I, I like a going here, but it did fix the problem. And and I think it will probably fix the problem with this plot as well. Um, here we go. And here we go. And uh, a thing of some beauty. There we go. Okay, 100 years of incident. Oh, yeah. What I did to solve the problem, I I don't have a great explanation why it solved it. I I have only partial explanations. Um, I'd have to muse about it a little bit more, but I, I think it's in the right area. I, I just have to pin down the particulars. This chart. So what I, I had a, a few hypotheses. Look, when you have problems on a computer in general and in a model as one one case of it, the ways in which you pursue them is to develop hypotheses. That's the way I know to pursue it, and it's used by many, many parties uh, who are virtuosos at rooting out problems. So when a problem occurs, you develop a hypothesis, why am I seeing the problem? And then you investigate those hypotheses. Often you have a first working hypothesis and some alternative ones. You investigate the working one, or, or one you can rule out easily, and you you go and you try to confirm or, or falsify that hypothesis by looking for things you could do to test it or pieces of information that would, you know, um, cross check with it or, or falsify it. So my first, so basically what I saw is we saw a manifestation of this chart. Despite my saying, keep a hundred samples. Despite my knowing that the model run, we set it to be for 100 time units, which is years. Despite the fact we have just a yearly update mechanism, this 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 um, event, this chart was not keeping all the samples. It was kind of weirdly scrolling. It was forgetting the earlier ones. I said, that looks to me like it's not able to keep all the data. And it was roughly half of it. So I said, I wonder, and one of the students said, you know, is it possible it's not able to keep like half the data? So I thought, oh yeah, I've seen this thing before. <laughs> I've seen it. I, I've seen it. I've been around the bush a lot. I'm an old man, seen it. So I, my first thought was, okay, maybe this data set is updating too many times. So I went and I looked at it and it says, do not update data automatically. I said, huh, you know, if it were like this, I would have thought, oh yeah, yeah, it's maybe it's doing it. It's updating it. It's getting told, put this value in it every year. 
but then it maybe it's updating automatically. Maybe that's leading to have two entries for every time. But it wasn't like that. Then I said, well, okay, this thing only goes off every year. And that's what adds to this. So like, what could be going wrong? And then I ran the model and I saw this had a bunch of double entries in it. Zero, zero, one, time zero, zero. So there are two entries for time zero, two entries for time one, two entries for time three, two for time three, two entries for each of them. Mm. So I said, okay. Okay, I'm developing actually more articulated theory of it now. So I said, look, that's that's weird. But the interesting thing is that... I guess John is gone. Um, the interesting thing is that um, uh, it wasn't the same value each time. And, and I think in one case it was two, and then the other one it was zero. And for the same time. So, ah, okay, so maybe it is getting updated somehow. And I thought, okay, look. Look, the only other thing that deals with this data set besides this, this thing, this event adds it, but I know it's only going off every once a year. The only other thing that really knows about this data set in the model is what? What thing here knows about this data set other than this event? What thing is told to do something with this data set? Where is it? It's the, begins with C. Ends with T as an H in it or chart, you know, this, this time plan. Um, so it was set to update data, data automatically. I thought, okay, it's going to probably tell that data set, update yourself. And it's going to stick extra values in for time zero, extra values in for time one, extra values in for time two. It's going to tell the data set, like, do this work where, my God, I just wanted to, Add in the event. I don't want it to be updating, like telling, wanting the data set to update. And I think effectively that's what was going on. It was telling the data set, generate more data for me. Give me more data. Give me more data. And I think the data set was like saying, oh, okay, it's time zero. Time to make the donuts. I'm going to put in zero. And then the event was going off and adding an actual real value. And then it was, and doing something like that. So I went and I changed this from the update to do not update data automatically here. If I change it back, I bet we get that same thing again. You wanna see it? You wanna see it? I'm gonna show it to you. I bet we'll get it back. That's my hypothesis now. I think it's that. I think it comes down to that. Watch this. You wanna see it? Check it out. Check it out. One recognizes the serpent by its poison. Um, look at it. Two, zero, two, one, three, one, three, zero, four, zero, four, zero, seven, two, seven, zero. It's getting, for each time, it's getting updated like twice. The second time always seems to be zero, or, one of them always seems to be zero. The other one seems to have meaningful values, you know, from particular years as added by that event. But it's getting double entries, which is wacko. Like, that's not what I want. And one of them is always zero. And I think because it doesn't know what to put there otherwise. It's, it's only the event that sticks meaningful values there. So what did I do? I disabled that here. And, and I said, do not update data automatically. And it's, and then I run it and it's a happy, it's going to be a happy camper. Okay. There we go. And you may not know it. You may not know this technical term, ladies and gentlemen, but this model is a happy camper. Okay. Take it from an old man. Okay. So now it's getting real values. And now one result of that correction is that this displays all of its 100 values in a happy way because the model is a happy camera. Are we okay with that? 
may we end today's session of lectures with this happy camper of a model? Yeah, thank you. I will post this happy camper of a model for all to enjoy. Okay, here we go. I'm posting it forthwith and And with those words, I will close today's event. For the lectures, we'll here be dealing with some, um, um, yeah, thank you, um, with some particulars um, on the um, incubator. And we'll resume 8.30 tomorrow, okay? Thank you very much for your patience today, for your stalwart participation. And I look forward to seeing people tomorrow. Thank you.